Welcome to Alpine Lumber's New Hire Safety Orientation. Safety is a core value at Alpine Lumber, and we want you to understand some important basics that apply to all the yards. What's our goal? Well, we're constantly working toward reducing accidents and injuries, which means continuous improvement. And of course, you're a part of that as a new Alpine Lumber employee. We ask that you get help when needed, ask a lot of questions, but also hold yourself accountable for your actions. You probably have high expectations of us, and we have high expectations of you. Personal protective equipment is also called PPE. PPE is required at all yards and manufacturing facilities, and it's there to protect you, so don't fight it. It's to ensure you go home in the same condition every night. PPE is also required for drivers when they arrive on a construction site. Drivers must wear the PPE as required by the construction company. If you're a driver, just have your hard hat, high visibility vest, safety glasses, and work boots ready before you step out of the truck on a construction site. If you work in the yard or drive a truck or work in manufacturing, you will be required to wear sturdy shoes with leather upper and a sole that resists cuts and punctures. All locations have a boot reimbursement policy. Check with your supervisor to see what amount is reimbursable at your location. Also required at locations is a reflective vest or shirt. This will be provided by Alpine Lumber with our logo. For the first year, you will be provided with an orange vest. This helps everyone know to be looking out for the newest team members. After a year, you'll be given a yellow high visibility vest. Safety glasses are required. If you wear prescription glasses, there's a reimbursement policy at each yard. You'll have to have a recent prescription. Alpine Lumber does not pay for the doctor's exam. Other PPE may be required such as gloves or face shield and chaps used for using a chainsaw. Hearing protection is required in our manufacturing facilities. We've done testing for overexposure to dusts. And we found that respiratory protection is not required, but some people prefer to use a dust mask in dusty locations anyway. A final piece of PPE that we can't forget is seat belts. Seat belts are required for all forklift operations, no matter how short your time in the seat. You'll be hearing later about a forklift operator who might have been severely injured if he hadn't had his seat belt on. If you're a driver without your seat belt and you get a ticket, you'll be paying the fine. Seatbelt violations go on your record, and they can make you uninsurable to drive for us. So just wear your seatbelt. Your participation in a safe work environment is expected. You're expected to report any unsafe conditions that you can't correct yourself immediately. If you don't report issues, how can we get problems fixed? You and your co-workers have a responsibility to each other to report safety issues and near misses so that the next person doesn't get injured because of a problem that you could have helped fix. What is a near miss? You need to understand that every accident could have been more serious or less serious. A near miss is an opportunity to change. The difference between a near miss and a serious accident might be an inch or a split second. Please report near misses and make corrections necessary to be better next time. When there is an injury, the first priority is always to take care of the injured person. Make sure you and your co-workers are safe and getting the medical attention necessary. Don't hesitate to call 911 if an ambulance is needed. In Colorado, you can't go to your own doctor. If you're in New Mexico, you will choose your own doctor. If you're injured at work, please tell your supervisor immediately. If you can't perform your regular duties, we will require that you seek medical attention. We hope you don't have a work injury ever. If you are injured, you'll be required to participate in the incident investigation, fill out all of the paperwork required by the Department of Labor, and you might have a lot of questions about how the worker comp system works. You'll be assisted through the claim by a worker comp claims manager who's required to follow the New Mexico or the Colorado Department of Labor rules depending on your work location. In Colorado, you have to choose a designated provider. What's a designated provider? 
The Colorado Department of Lab Labor has given insurance companies the right to select a list of physicians that an injured employee may choose from. You'll be given this list. Some locations have only one or two local doctors willing to provide services to injured workers. Most locations have a list of four to choose from. This is your doctor for the duration of your claim in Colorado. In New Mexico, you find your own doctor. You'll be required to follow the worker comp rules and any doctor's limitations both on and off the job. More information on injuries and accidents? First of all, tell your supervisor or manager when you've had an injury, an accident, or a near miss. Don't try to hide it. Have someone take you or get yourself to a clinic. Call 911 if necessary. Bring your return to work paperwork to your manager as soon as possible. Stay in communication with your manager about your doctor's orders and your injury status. We need you to participate in the investigation. Help us make change. Follow your doctor's orders for light duty and get to your appointments as required. Work light duty if it's offered to you. You will not get paid for the first three days you're off work in Colorado and the first five days you're off in New Mexico for an injury. Contact the Alpine Lumber Safety Manager, HR, or the Worker Comp Insurance Provider with questions. If you get injured on the job, Alpine Lumber will do everything we can to get you back to work. We want you here. So we'll find modified duty or light duty work when your doctor says you can work within restrictions. If light duty is available for you, you'll be required to do those jobs. It's good for you and it's good for Alpine Lumber. Alpine Lumber has a program called Safety Alerts. When an injury or accident happens that we can all learn from, a safety alert is sent out company-wide and a yard meeting will take place to learn from it. No one wants to be the reason for a safety alert, but if you can get beyond your ego and help others learn from your mistakes, we can continue to improve our safety culture. It's not personal, it's about getting better. The next few minutes will be spent on a few of our lessons learned so you can see what information is shared when an incident happens. In our first lessons learned, the forklift operator was using a heister forklift. The forklift operator set himself up to remove two units of siding from the stack on the next aisle over, the aisle not shown in this photo. He stuck the forks all the way into the stack and didn't realize that the forks had gone under the siding behind the stacks he was lifting. So the forks went through the load he wanted to lift and grabbed a small portion of the material in this photo. This caused the siding shown in the photo to lift up and tip over, falling to the ground and damaging a few of the pieces of siding. Thankfully, there was no one on the other side of the stacks. The problem was in the length of the forks and knowing the depth of the material being lifted. The lessons learned is to know your equipment. Every brand of forklift has a different fork length. Equipment changes over time. We might order forks with shorter or longer forks or a different type of forklift altogether. You are responsible to know your forklift and know your loads. Every load has a different dimension, and it does make a difference where it's placed along the forks. In this lessons learned, a forklift operator removed a pack of floor joists off a reload truck. The longest units in the pack were 39 feet. The pack was positioned correctly in its strongest position with a unit on edge. However, because the unit was so narrow and had too much weight on the ends, it rolled onto the flat, weak side when the forklift operator turned to drive away from the truck. Many times these packs come in unbalanced or weighted to one side. Normal procedure for a forklift operator is to attempt to pick up the item and test for the center of gravity. If the center of the item isn't the center of gravity, the forklift operator will adjust the placement of the forks and reattempt to pick up the material. Watch how this operator tests his load and readjusts until he finds the right center of gravity in order to move the floor joist safely.
This forklift operator had adjusted for center of gravity, but the item rolled onto its weak side and was so heavy on the ends that the floor joist broke in half. This may not have been a problem for fast frame because their combi lifts have a very wide span on the forks. Fast frame took responsibility for understanding that taking the time to look at weight distribution in batching, stacking, and assembling the orders will prevent this in the future. In addition, there are two options in the event that this situation exists when the floor joists have already been delivered to a yard. If the load is sitting directly on the deck of the truck, they can unband the extra weight on the ends. The remaining load should be light enough even if it tips on its weak side. Or, they can return the load to have a combi lift unload it to be repackaged. Long loads such as these floor joists can be really difficult to move. The bands stretch and the loads will twist. This really needs to be done by an experienced operator. The Alpine Lumber driver was delivering OSB to a customer's home. The customer directed where he wanted the load placed. The customer put down scrap OSB to protect the driveway. The Alpine Lumber driver was using a controlled dump method by slowly lowering the OSB with a strap when the strap broke and the OSB hit the pillar, which has mortared rock as a design feature, breaking a rock off. The Alpine Lumber driver was asked if the strap was inspected and in good condition when he went on the delivery, and the answer was yes, it was inspected, and no, it was not in the best condition, but the driver thought it would hold the load. Lessons learned here is to conduct more education on policy guidelines regarding when straps need to be replaced, not using damaged straps, knowing the rated loads of straps. Alpine Lumber has a customer release for these situations. When a customer wants a load dropped near their home car or other property. At a minimum, forcing a homeowner or superintendent to sign a waiver gives them pause to consider if they're willing to take the risk on where the load is dumped. Alpine lumber drivers are expected to be professionals. Telling a homeowner or project manager that it isn't safe to dump a load so close to property is part of knowing your profession. Driver was delivering trusses to a remote location. At the bottom of the road, there's a covered bridge which is 14 feet 6 inches at its narrowest point, and the truck had to make a slight turn to get through the bridge. While attempting to drive through the bridge, the driver overestimated the width of the bridge and did not consider the position of the trusses when making his way through. One bundle of trusses hit one of the bridge posts, causing the trusses to fall off of the truck and do damage to the bridge. The trusses are designed to be 12 feet 11 inches wide to keep them under the pilot car limit of 13 feet wide. There was a driver that had already gone through the bridge with a load of trusses. This first driver called the framing foreman to come to the bridge to help him through. He got out three or four times, even with help, to ensure he was not going to hit the bridge. There are no signs posting the bridge width, so it was a guessing game without measuring. All trucks have tape measures because they're hauling wide loads and encounter narrow roads. The driver could have called ahead to the first driver to see how he made it through, or the first driver could also have told the framing foreman that another load of trusses were on the way and that driver would need assistance also. Lessons learned, don't guess. If you don't know the answer, find out before you cause damage. This is the lessons learned about taking material on a forklift over people and property. The forklift operator was traveling through a customer loading area with 24-foot material on his forks. There were several customer vehicles parked in his path. Normally, this material would not go toward the customer loading area, but the yard was having paving and patching completed, so there were inaccessible routes. The forklift operator raised his forks and went over the customer vehicles. As he was over the Dodge pickup, he hit an uneven patch of asphalt, causing his load to shift and slide off of his forks, landing on the customer's windshield, roof, and hood. 
The customer was standing next to his vehicle checking his straps and could have been injured. It could easily have been prevented if he would have waited for the customer to move. Lessons learned is that material must never be carried over any person's head or vehicle. Do not move material over anything that cannot withstand having the material dropped on it. Never. In this lessons learned, the forklift operator was approaching a truck to load it with two units of 2x6 16-foot dug fir larch. As he came to the end of the row, which opens up to the reload truck lanes, another forklift was coming at him from the side, which caused him to slam on his brakes. The units were elevated on the forks, and the momentum of the stop caused the forklift to tip forward. Fortunately, the forks wedged themselves into the bottom unit instead of the asphalt. The operator sustained a bump to his head when he unbuckled his seatbelt and fell forward. He was sent to the doctor as a precaution and released without injury. The operator was not in his normal forklift but instead was in a smaller lift rated at a maximum capacity of 11,000 pounds. This forklift is used at reload to unload boxcars because it's small enough to get inside them. He was carrying two units of dug fur, which weighs 12,398 pounds. The operator said that when he picked the units up initially, that the back end of the forklift lifted off the ground, but he thought it would be faster to continue with two units than go back for each unit separately. The lessons learned is that if the forklift is coming off the ground, don't make the choice to intentionally disregard safety for convenience. Know your forklift. If this isn't your usual forklift, then you might need to look at the load ratings even if you're an experienced forklift operator. Know how much weight you're lifting. Know your wood species. Two units of 2x6 hemfers weighs 9,980 pounds. Two units of dug fur, which often replaces hemfur, weighs 12,398 pounds. And the maximum rating of this Toyota was 11,000 pounds. Forklifts should be driven with forks as low as they can reasonably be with a load on them. This forklift was far above capacity. If at any time you cannot see forward because of the load, forklift operators have two options. Reduce the load so that you can see or drive backward. This operator started to lift the load to place it onto the truck well before he was close to the truck, causing his center of gravity, be, gravity to be shifted up and out and his forward vision to be blocked. Even if this load had been hem fur and he could have carried two units, he should have waited until he got to the truck to elevate the load. Slow down. There are better ways to be more efficient than forklift operators driving at the maximum speed the lift will go with the maximum load on the forklift. Alpine Lumber does not allow our drivers to use mobile devices while driving. If you're suspected of talking or texting while driving an Alpine Lumber logoed vehicle, even your personal phone records can be reviewed and this can lead to termination. Cell phones and earbuds are not allowed in the yards. Please leave your cell phones in your lockers if you work in the yard. Alpine Lumber takes seriously any drug or alcohol use while working for us. We have many safety sensitive positions as well as we're regulated by the Department of Transportation and everyone needs to be at the top of their game in order to keep us all safe. Besides the pre-employment drug screen, we also require your participation in random drug testing, post-accident, and reasonable suspicion drug testing. Don't think that you won't be called up for a random drug screen. Every month your name goes back into the pool, so you could be picked several months in a row. Understand that Alpine Lumber employees are expected to work safely, and that many drugs stay in your system for extended periods of time. Up to 28 days for marijuana. There's no way to measure if you're fit for duty, so any amount found in your system is cause for termination. Lockout tagout is the process of shutting down equipment and physically locking it so that it can't be turned back on while a person is working on it. At our manufacturing facilities, there's a lot of lockout tagout that needs to be performed during maintenance activities. If you don't have the training, you can't work on equipment during maintenance. Lockout tagout can be as simple as pulling the plug on a tool and having control of the plug while you're working on the equipment, but even a simple lockout requires you to be trained.
You must lock out equipment if the unexpected startup of the machine could cause injury. Normal conveyor movement or use of saws is not unexpected startup. If you see locks and tags on equipment, it means someone's working on that equipment. You must respect these locks and stay away from the equipment while the locks and tags are in place. There will be additional yard specific safety information that will be covered in your new hire onboarding. We've reached the end of this section of the training. Your supervisor might pause the video now and bring you back to HAZCOM training and fire extinguisher training later.